So we're still looking at surface area. This time we're looking at cones and spheres. Now I'm going to give you two formulas here. Cones, there's a cone, and spheres. So now that we've got these two formulas, let's talk about them in turn. Now the surface area of a cone is broken into two distinct parts. Now pi r squared, you recognize that. That's a circle. And this pi r squared here refers to the base of our cone. So this is just the circle part of our cone. And which leaves this part here, which of course refers to the bit around the outside, the slanted bit around the outside. And the formula for that is pi r s. Now of course r means the radius, and s is this thing here, which we'll call the slant height. Now you need to be careful there because the slant height is not the height of the cone. It's the, the length from the very tip, if you were to slide down the cone whee, and hit the base, that's the slant height. So of course, as usual, you need to be careful with these formulas. Sometimes you might not want the circle. If this was built on the ground and you only wanted to paint the curved bit, then you wouldn't be thinking about the area of the circle, just the slanted bit around the outside. Uh, okay, this one here, the sphere, that formula is just very self-contained, 4 pi r squared. If this is a sphere, you can see this is the area of a circle. The area, the surface area of a sphere is four times whatever a circle with the same radius would be. So this is my first question, determine the surface area of this cone. Now you can see it has a radius of three and it has a height of four. Now that's a problem because when we look at our formula, there is no height in our formula. Instead, there is a slant height. So if we want to find out the surface area of this shape, we're going to have to first determine the slant height, which we'll call S. Now, of course, you can see a right angle triangle here. So we can use Pythagoras' theorem to find out what S is. So relatively straightforward there, Pythagoras' theorem, S equals five. So now that we know what S is, we can just find the surface area using that formula. So formula, numbers, answer, 75.40, to two decimal places. Now, of course, if the question was different, if it was just asking us for the curved section, we'd just be doing this, but this question asks us for the total surface area, so that's what we're going. So example two here, it's a sphere, it couldn't be easier. Now, I got excited, I deleted, I rubbed out all of my other stuff, but we know that the surface area of a sphere is equal to four pi r squared. And the radius of this particular sphere is 22. So we just put in our numbers, get an answer. Okay, so that's the surface area of a sphere. Could not be easier. All right, so now we're going to work backwards a little bit. Determine the radius of the hemisphere. So we're going to determine R. A hemisphere is half of a sphere. So you can see that here. If the surface area indicated is 150 centimeters squared. What do I mean by the surface area indicated? You can see I've shaded this outside bit. So we're only interested in the outside of the hemisphere. It doesn't have a flat top on it. The question would be different if it had a flat top on it, but this question doesn't have a flat top on it, so the question's not different. Okay, we know the formula for the surface area of a sphere. That's the surface area for a sphere, which means that the surface area for a hemisphere must be half of that. So we'll divide it by two. Now, in this particular question, we know the surface area. We don't know the radius. So we can sub 150 in for surface area. So while I did that, while I subbed in 150 for surface area, I also did four divided by two, which left the right-hand side as being two pi r squared. Now I want to get the r by itself. So I'm going to divide both sides by two pi. And when I want to know what r is, I just need to divide both, oh sorry, square root both sides. So r is going to be equal to the square root. I'm just going to simplify this. 150 divided by 2 pi, that's the same as 75 divided by pi. Now I need a little plus minus here because I'm square rooting that. But I can reject the negative answer because a radius isn't going to be negative. So if you type square root of 75 divided by pi into your calculator, you're going to get 4.87. Um, this is centimetres squared, so the radius must be in centimetres. And that's to two decimal places, of course. 
Um, now, I did say that the question would be more difficult if we had to consider um, that maybe this is shaded in. So let's have a crack at something that looks more difficult than this. So this is not the same question. The question has changed. This is example four now. Determine the radius of the hemisphere if the surface area indicated is 150 centimetres squared. And this time, the surface area indicated is the curved bit around the bottom of this bowl, but the bowl also has a lid. So we need to reconsider what the formula for the surface area of this thing is. Let's consider the curved part first. We know that the surface area of the curved part is going to be 4 pi r squared, because that's the surface area of a whole sphere, and then divided by 2. So that's 2 pi r squared. So that's the curvy bit. But there's a circle here as well. And we know that the area of a circle is pi r squared. So that's going to give us plus pi r squared there. Now, of course, we know that the surface area of this object is 150 centimetres squared. So let's sub that in for surface area. And now I need to get r by itself. But the problem is that I have this r squared here and this r squared here. So if I factorise this side, I'll get um, r squared bracket 2 pi plus, and then what's this bit? Pi, 2 pi plus pi. All right, wait a minute. 2 pi plus pi, that's 3 pi. So I can just make that bracket 3 pi. And so what I'm going to have is 3 pi, 3 pi times r squared. All right, this looks relatively straightforward. I've got 150 equals 3 pi r squared. And now I can just divide both, uh, both sides by 3 pi, and that'll leave me with r squared. And just like the previous question, I can square root both sides. And when you do that, you get an r value of 3.99 centimeters, of course, to two decimal places. That makes sense. That r value is slightly smaller than our previous example, using the same shape with no lid. Uh, which feels feels about right. All right, that's um, surface area of cones and spheres. Even though I've given you two formulas here, it's important that you continue engaging your brain and altering those formulas depending on what the shape actually is.